the English Electric Lightning, what's all the fuss about? Find out more about it right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Now today is a context video. It's there to provide some historical background to the kit of the week and also to give the history of the kit of the week and its competitors in the marketplace. The kit of the week this week is the English Electric Lightning F2A in 170 second scale from Airfix. So today I'll be giving you a history of the English Electric Lightning and then I'll be having a look at the history of this particular kit and also what other kits are available from other manufacturers. If you like the show, and I hope you do, please remember Imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, please do think about subscribing to the channel, hit that bell and you'll be notified of all my future videos, including the build video for this very kit. And if you'd like to offer a bit more concrete support, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or through any of my online partner programs. Of course, you can also send me a kit to make just like Nick Johnson did. Thank you very much, Nick. So let's move on then and have a look at the history of the English Electric Lightning. The English Electric Lightning was a British fighter aircraft that became an icon of the Cold War in the UK. It's instantly recognisable to many, and its rocket-like takeoff is legendary among any who have witnessed it. The Lightning came from a requirement for a trials aircraft capable of Mach 1.5. The initial prototype, the P1, had an unusual stacked engine layout fed by an intake in the nose and wings with a sweep of 60 degrees. The low set tailplane was a concern, so Short Brothers was issued a contract to build the SB-5 research aircraft to test options for low speed control. These showed the original design to be sound. In 1950, production of three prototypes was approved, two of which were to fly. The first of these, Whiskey Golf 760, flew for the first time in August 1954 with Roland B. Beaumont at the controls. On the third flight, he officially exceeded Mach 1 supersonic flight for the first time. The P-1 suffered from very limited fuel storage, but it did reach the required Mach 1.5 in trials. The improved P-1B arrived in 1957, B taking its supersonic on its first flight with the more powerful Rolls-Royce Avon engines. In November 1958, it reached Mach 2, the first British aircraft to do so. The first production aircraft, the Lightning F1, was delivered to the RAF in May 1960 and entered service with number 74 squadron two months later, armed with two 30mm cannon and two fire streak heat-seeking missiles. The squadron even formed an aerobatics team, the Tigers, with their Lightnings under the command of squadron leader Johnny Howe. The F2 variant had more powerful engines and the F2A introduced the ventral fuel tank for improved endurance. The F-3 featured the new red-top heat-seeking missiles and a redesigned fin. The last fighter version was the F-6 with new, more efficient wings, overwing fuel tank capacity and a larger ventral tank. Two-seat side-by-side trainers were also built, starting with the T-4 and the T-5. Used as an interceptor, the Lightning had a formidable rate of climb. The vertical climb used at air shows was spectacular but inefficient. A good flight profile would have the Lightning reach 11,000 metres altitude from a standing start in under three minutes. Its initial job was to protect the V-bomber bases in conjunction with missiles such as the Bloodhound, but the development of in-flight refuelling later allowed interceptions at much greater ranges. With the introduction of the longer-ranged F-4 Phantom and later the Tornado ADV, Lightnings were phased out of frontline duties and finally retired in 1988. 
the Lightning had equipped 12 RAF squadrons and was exported to Saudi Arabia and to Kuwait. An amazing 72 of the original 337 Lightnings that were built still survive, including the P1A and P1B prototypes. One aircraft, a T5 trainer, X-ray Sierra 422, is being restored to flying condition by the Anglo-American Lightning Association in Mississippi. This 172nd scale FX kit was first released in 2013 as a new tooling. It has been released as the F2A or the F6 Mark four times since then, including once as a gift set and most recently in 2020. The first FX kit in 172nd scale was made in 1963 and was re-released with occasional new parts and decals until 2002. This was also released under the MPC brand in 1968 and in 1982. Way back in 1956, Frog produced a kit of the P1 prototype in 172nd scale, a kit that continued in production until 1967. Then in 1974, Frog created their tooling of the Lightning F6. This was picked up by the usual Eastern European producers from 1978 onwards, including, among others, Novo, Donetsk Toy Factory, Kematic, ZTS Plastic, Eastern Express, and finally, ARC Models in 2011. I haven't seen any ARC Models kits myself, but I'm guessing these moulds are pretty tired by now. This tooling was also picked up by Revel, in 1996. Hasegawa brought their tooling of the F6 Lightning to market in 1967. This has been in the range right through to the most recent boxing, this combo from 2012. It was also picked up by UPC in 1969, by Minicraft in 1977 and by Revel in 2007. The first release by Matchbox was in 1976, a tooling that evolved a two-seat trainer version in 1983. Trumpeter created a new tooling in 2008, following it with two other kits in 2008 and 2009. This was also sold by Monochrome in 2009. Sword released their new moulding of the T4 trainer in 2014, following it with four more trainer and single seat versions through to 2018. Closing up in 172nd scale are the resin kits from Whirlybird, which include white metal and photo etched parts. This includes a kit of the P1 prototype as well. Moving on to the huge 132nd scale, Trumpeter released a kit in 2009 that was available as the F1A and F3 with the rounded tail, or the F2A or F6 with the squared off tail. This will be about 56 centimetres, or almost 21 inches long, when assembled. Slightly more manageable with the 148 scale kits. FX released their first in 1997, made available most recently again in 2015. This moulding was also sold by Grand Phoenix in 2004, and with new parts by Edward in 2009. Sword released their 148 scale kits in 2015, concentrating on the T4 and the T5 trainers. Tamiya made a kit in the unusual 1/100th scale in 1968. This was picked up by Revlin in 1984 and by Ben Hobby in 1986. And finally, the Lightning was sold by Revel in 1/144th scale from 1992, but for a comprehensive survey of the squadrons that operated the breed, including the P1A prototype, 144th.co.uk can help you out. What an amazing aeroplane. I mean, in one bound, Britain went from transonic interceptors, I mean, you could make them go supersonic in a dive if you really had to, to something that would crack on at Mach 2 at 65,000 feet and had a fully integrated weapon system. What an amazing aeroplane, incredible design, 
and a classic. People still recognise it today. And if they were flying, my goodness, they'd have an audience. Wonderful aeroplane. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this show. If you have, please do remember, Imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and you'll be notified of all my future videos as they turn up on the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again very soon. Take care now and goodbye.